aircraft will be separated less than 29 minutes after liftoff. Once the spacecraft is in, um, on its way and far enough, the launcher will uh, begin its uh, end of life maneuver and passivation, completely emptying its tank and reducing uh, its lifetime in orbit. Well, thank you very much, Vincent, for all this. Uh of this light turn red. We may stop the countdown to ident identify the problem, of course, to solve it and then come back for the launch. So yesterday, uh, high altitude winds uh, over the launch site exceeded the limits uh, that are part of the safety conditions uh, for every uh, IN5 mission. High altitude winds can cause uh, debris uh, from the launcher to fall on populated areas. That's why uh, the CSG, as sovereign uh, safety authority, was unable to, to authorize the launch yesterday night, leading to the postponement uh, decision. Okay. Thank you, Vincent. Well, at any moment now, the DDO, Director of the Operations in Kourou, should be announcing tonight's synchronized sequence. Of course, all the teams in Kourou are waiting for this moment with braided breath, and so are we. Yeah. And so what I understand, it was a question of safety yesterday. So this yeah. red turn to safety. Now let's, let's focus on the images we have. And uh, let's see, uh, can you comment what we see? That's the fishbowl. Yes, so here we are in the, the, control, uh, the, control, uh, the flight control center, so the Jupiter room. So you have all the teams uh, and responsible involved for this, uh, for this uh, flight tonight. Uh, we can see in the middle of, the, of this room the, the range opera operation director, so the DDO in French. Uh, that will be hearing within a second normally. Yeah. À tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence finale lanceur. Top H0-7 minutes. So this yeah. is what we were expecting. Yeah, so the DDO has just announced that uh, we Good have entered news. the synchronized sequence. So from now, the launcher is in its uh, final automatic mode. Thank yeah. you, Vincent. We will be having and um, keeping a close eye on that green panel for the next yeah. seven minutes, that's for sure. In the meantime, because we have some time, I would like to turn your attention on the exceptional passenger on board we have tonight. It certainly is. Yeah, Utelsat Connect VHTS. It's the 37th Utelsat satellite, satellite to be launched by Ariane Space. Let's take a look at this short report in which we will know everything about it. Dazzling, tremendous and incredibly powerful, tonight Ariane 5 takes off with a very special passenger, UTELSAT Connect VHTS. Approximately 9 meters high, weighing 6.4 tons, it simply is the largest satellite ever built by Thales Alenia Space. It will be operated by one of the leading operators in the commercial satellite business, UTELSAT. Utelsat Connect VHTS est doté d'une capacité de 500 gigabits sur les deux voies aller-retour, ce qui en fait euh, le satellite le plus puissant de toute la flotte de Telsat. Pour le concevoir, il a fallu euh, imaginer ce que serait euh, un satellite euh, de nouvelle génération, capable de servir les, les besoins de broadband et euh, surtout le plus efficace d'un point de vue euh, coût de production. Our passenger has a key mission to bring high-speed broadband across Europe, thus bridging the digital divide. To watch a movie or to communicate, to study or to work, our daily lives now depend on connectivity. UTELSAT Connect VHTS will be able to help over 500,000 households living in remote areas without access to the internet. Avec Eutelsat Connect VHTS, Thales Agnès Space est aux côtés de la France et l'Europe dans leur ambition de déploiement de la connectivité très haut débit sur l'ensemble du territoire. Nous sommes très fiers de fournir à Eutelsat, notre partenaire de longue date, un satellite au meilleur niveau de la technologie mondiale. Eutelsat Connect VHTS, based on a space bus neo platform, is a next generation very high throughput satellite. It will support the development of the operator's fixed broadband and in-flight connectivity businesses. Nous avons déjà plusieurs contrats commerciaux 
commerciaux. Le premier avec Orange, filiale de Nornet, pour servir la France. Le deuxième avec Telecom Italia Mobile, pour servir l'Italie. Et avec le groupe Thales, à travers leur division Avionix et euh, leur société sœur Telespazio, à la Space Alliance. C'est des contrats qui ont déjà commencé avec Connect et qui vont se poursuivre sur Connect VHTS. The birth of this gigantic satellite was made possible by the close collaboration between UTELSAT and Thales Alenia Space. UTELSAT Connect VHTS is a record-breaking satellite. Rien de tout cela n'aurait été possible sans une augmentation significative de nos investissements en R&D, ainsi que le soutien institutionnel continu du CNES, de l'Agence spatiale européenne et le recours au programme d'investissement d'avenir. ETELSAT Connect VHTS est emblématique de notre vision Space for Life et permet d'offrir aux citoyens européens une connectivité haut débit, hors pair. Now under the fairing of Ariane Space's launcher, this satellite is about to take the most incredible ride ever, a flight on board Ariane 5, destination geostationary orbit. Well, this satellite is practically nine meters high, we learned, and weighs 6.4 tons. It's what you'd call an XXL satellite. Not easy to maneuver, I imagine. So, Vincent, can you comment on the images that are coming up on our screen of the launch campaign? Yes, so the, the launcher campaign started with the arrival of the launcher cryogenic stages and elements at the Guiana Space Center. The launcher operation started at the end of July with the installation of the main cryogenic stage inside the launcher integration building. Then the two boosters were transferred and integrated uh, to the main cryogenic stage. And finally, the upper stage was safely hoisted and integrated on top of the main stage. Once completed, the launcher was tra transferred to the final assembly building. The transfer of the impressive spacecraft payload from Thales Toulouse to Thales Cannes in France happened at night. The traffic was blocked as the convoy pro progressed. The complete spacecraft was then transferred to French Guiana by boat and arrived in Kourou at the beginning of August after a two weeks trip. The spacecraft container was transferred to the preparation facilities in the space center where it was unloaded in the clean room facilities. Some inspection checks and L tests were run. After completion of this verification, the spacecraft was okay. transferred in specific Arzados clean room when, where it was fueled. After completion of this fueling, the combined operation started with the mating of the spacecraft on its fly adapter. The spacecraft was then loaded in a specific container and transferred to the final assembly building where the preparation of Ariane 5 was close to completion. As you can see on the, on the video, uh, Connect VHTS was then hosted up to the upper platforms and safely integrated on top of the launcher. Then the fairing was installed on top of the, of the launcher, an operation that requires uh, particular attention and control. And after completion of this installation, the logo of our tonight customer was put uh, on the fairing. And finally, yesterday, the launcher was transferred to the launch pad, where it is now ready for liftoff. Yeah, all, all this work, Vincent, to end now, the DDO is about to announce that we are only one minute away uh, from liftoff. To the DDO, for minus one minute. So now we... Don't comment and we watch the show. Top, H0 moins une minute. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage des EAP. Et décollage.
La trajectoire est nominale. La propulsion est nominale. La propulsion est nominale. The clear skies, the sounds of cameras clicking. And we still have an incredible, incredible image. image. That's really a bright night. So, Vincent, can you tell Le us now? We're intrigued to know it's disappearing up into space, but what are the next important stages of its journey? Yes, for the, for the time being, the, the launcher is still in its... Uh, initial conditions, that is to say, in still in, uh, in one piece, I, I would say. But in one minute, uh, approximately, the, the two solid uh, boosters will separate uh, from uh, the main stage that will occur at uh, precisely at two minutes and 20 seconds. Then, uh, one minute later, the, the fairing will be jettisoned. No nominal. more atmosphere. So no need to maintain the fairing uh, on the launcher. At eight minutes and 36 seconds, the Vulcan engine will be switched off. And the main uh, cryogenic stage will be separated six seconds later. So the engine of the upper cryogenic stage will be then ignited and will take the reins during more than 16 minutes in order to reach the targeted orbit. La propulsion est nominale, le pilotage est calme. And we have the image of yeah. the booster. We still have it. It's incredible. That's incredible. Separation des EAP. So you have that confirmation. Yes, we, we have the confirmation, yes, as you can see, that the, the two boosters have been successfully separated. So, Vincent, what I would like to ask you is, without these two boosters, the launcher is obviously now lighter than it was at takeoff. Can you tell us more about its weight now? Why does it need these boosters anymore? Uh, yes, so the, the launcher is liberated from any dead weight in order to maximize the, the, capability, the capabilities uh, of the different stages. So that's why, as soon as the solid propellant uh, located inside the booster has been fully consumed, uh, the two boosters are separated. So after this separation, uh, the, the mass of the launcher is only 170 tons to be compared to uh, 770 tons at the uh, lift of time. We still have an in incredible image. That's incredible. And now we're waiting for the next stage. Yes. Separation de la cloth. Yes, we got confirmation that, the, as you can see on the, on the, on the video, uh, that the fairing has been uh, successfully jettisoned. So here we, we can see the, the spacecraft, yeah. Well, thank you, Vincent. We have five minutes before our next La milestone. So let's talk about Ariane 5's mission. We will come back to the different stages of this flight in a few moments. But before that, I would really like to talk about the specific geostationary orbit that we mentioned at the beginning of this program and towards which Ariane 5 is obviously now heading. First of all, what are the main orbits operated by Ariane Space? Well, uh, for observation and meteosat um, that need to pass over uh, an Earth region at the, at the same uh, local time every day, we use a SSO orbit, so a Sun synchronous orbit. For the International Space Station and also particular satellite constellations that need to be relatively close nominal. to the Earth's surface, we use a low Earth orbit for which the proximity to Earth is uh, very uh, useful, I would say. The Telecomsat, as a connect VHTS, uh, need to stay con constantly above one particular place over Earth. So they have to be placed on a geo-orbit, geostationary orbit. Uh, geo orbit. Ion-5 can inject such telecom orbit, uh, satellite, sorry, on a geo-transfer orbit called GTO. So the satellites are not directly placed on their final orbit. They need to use their own energy. They can move uh, to the final uh, geostationary orbit. Okay, and you explained to me before that um, it's a specific uh, flight tonight because the, the the orbit targeted is special. Yes, tonight Ariane 5 uh, inject, will inject the Connect VHTS spacecraft on a GTO uh, orbit with a, an, uh, an apology at 60,000 kilometers which is a little bit unusual. So the strategy to consider such a, 
an injection uh, with a very high apogee comes from a, a request from our customer and is made possible by uh, uh, the performance capabilities uh, Ariane 5 can offer for this single launch uh, mission. So we have customized the injection orbit uh, in order to satisfy as best as possible the, the request and demand from our customer. Okay, I'm sorry to insist. Why <laughs> is it a special demand, I guess, uh, you know? In fact, such uh, GTO injection enable uh, enables our customer to reduce the quantity of propellant uh, needed for the spacecraft to reach the final geo orbit after its separation from the launcher. So in other words, such injection is a more energetic orbit, uh, on a more energetic orbit, sorry, enables to reduce um, the propulsive cost for the spacecraft to reach its final operational orbit. The consequence is that the spacecraft will consume less propellant and its operational lifetime uh, will be then uh, extended. Okay. So what kind of satellites is this particular orbit suited to? Uh, such orbit is very interesting, typically for uh, electrical satellite as connect via VHTS. It enables the spacecraft operation engineer to optimize the post-launch sequence from the spacecraft separation uh, from, the, from the launcher up to the time when the spacecraft is positioned in its final orbit. Okay. Um, let's go back to life, uh, tonight's mission. Can you tell us about Ariane 5's present status? Yes, so uh, we are getting near the end of the main stage flight, so the flight sequence is running uh, perfectly as expected. Yes, the cutoff of the, main, of the main stage engine will occur in one minute and a half, approximately at eight minutes and uh, 36 seconds. And the launcher uh, is still tracked by the Galio Natal. ground station near Kourou. It will be uh, seen very soon by Natal. So we, Thank you. Yeah, we got the confirmation that uh, the launcher is now seen by the Natal ground station. Okay. Okay, well, I'd just like to say, um, going back into the um, Jupiter, we are with these very important VIPs today, Eva Bernacca, Dominique Dinin, Ross McInnes, and Hervé Doré. Uh, a bit of information here. Eva took the helm of UTELSA at the beginning of the year as Chief Executive Officer. Dominique what? heads the telecom. They're not just here on the screen yeah, yet, but they're there. Apparently they're there. But apparently we'll see them. outside the Jupiter room but watching, we'll, we'll, but see we'll see them, them we'll later. See them later. There's Dominique, who heads the Telecom Operators Board of Directors, of which Ross is a member. Hervé heads Thales Alenia Space, and it's his teams who designed and built the satellite launch tonight, UTELSAT Connect VHTS. But and we'll, say, have we'll, pleasure, later, we'll have the pleasure, pleasure of to, meeting interview, them, exactly. yeah, to interview later in the, in the, on Road to Space. Um, Let's go back to the flight, tonight's flight. We are not waiting for another announcement, really important by the DDO, mm -hmm. and it's about the main core. Yes, so there will be a, a successive announcement by the DDO. So there will be um, the extension of the main stage, then its separation, and after the beginning of the upper stage uh, flight. Separation de l'EPC. Okay. So we got confirmation that the PC is now, should, fin, the engine is, is, is cut off, and the main stage is uh, well separated, yes. Well separated, and we can see on, on those images uh, yes. and the upper behind stage us. is now ignited, yeah. Okay, so, so far so good. Yes, yeah, so everything is, uh, is running as expected, and uh, in few in few seconds we will lose the visibility of the launcher from the Galio uh, ground station. Okay, and all of this is 100% normal. Yes, and red person. All is going to plan. <laughs> um, well, we are just about. We're just to, waiting, yeah. Exactly, for the Galio tracking station to lose it. It's obviously operated by Kness and Kourou. It is the first telemetry station located on Ariane 5's trajectory, which is obviously eastward launch. In the last two minutes, it is the natal tracking station in Brazil, which has taken over and is now in contact with the launcher. Okay, so we still uh, we still wait. We are still waiting for the next uh, announcement. Uh, for those who are joining us, mm. you will have a replay. Stay with us. Can you just give us a, su a sum up of what happened and what will occur? Yes. So the main cryogenic stage was uh, separated uh, one uh, minute ab ago, approximately. So uh, this main stage uh, is uh, falling back to to Earth, so in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And now um, the upper stage, yes, has taken the reins uh, of the flight the and the Ariane 5 uh, mission continues. 
At this stage of the mission, no, Ariane 5 no longer looks anything like the launcher that took off at 6.45 local time. How many kilos did it lose exactly? Well, uh, the launcher has been uh, lightened by the, by the mass of the empty uh, main stage, and its weight now is only a little bit uh, more than 25 tons, uh, to be compared to uh, 717 tons at the lift of time. Okay, thank you very much for all those uh, informations. Uh, as Ariane 5 continues its uh, trajectory, let's take another look at this unique satellite on board, the Utelsat Connect VHTS. It was a challenge to build for Teles Alenia Space. We'll learn more about its construction. It's our next lineup, because science. Le satellite Connect VHTS se caractérise par sa taille, euh, sa puissance et son efficacité. Connect VHTS est surtout un défi, hein, et est un satellite très très puissant et qui nous offre euh, beaucoup de flexibilité. Bertrand et Tony sont ingénieurs pour l'opérateur Utelsat. For the past four years, they've been working on the latest satellite of the fleet, Utelsat Connect VHTS. On the occasion of this launch, they granted us an interview to share with us the secrets of this unusual satellite. Le but, c'est vraiment d'essayer de, de réduire cette uh, fracture numérique uh, dans une partie de l'Europe, uh, le nord d'Afrique ainsi que le Proche-Orient, ainsi que de fournir des services de, uh, de connectivité pour les avions et pour, uh, pour les maritimes. C'est un satellite superlatif, uh, c'est le satellite uh, le plus gros, le plus massif, uh, le plus puissant qui n'a jamais été construit en Europe. Il fonctionne de façon classique comme les autres satellites uh, géostationnaires de, de télécommunications. Basiquement, ce qu'on veut, c'est d'établir uh, un service d'Internet entre uh, un fournisseur d'internet et un utilisateur et au lieu d'utiliser un câble de fibre optique ou un lien ADSL on va utiliser un satellite. C'est un peu différent que les autres satellites classiques qu'on a qui fournissaient euh, la télévision. C'était des satellites qui avaient des faisceaux assez larges. Maintenant dans un satellite HTS on a des faisceaux assez étroits. C'est grâce qui... aux antennes de 3,50 m. Ce qui va nous permettre de réutiliser la fréquence autant qu'on peut. Ce qui va booster la capacité. C'est un satellite avec une telle capacité qui le fait très attirant pour le déployer pour un service de type broadband. Il a deux particularités, c'est qu'il utilise un système de propulsion électrique utilisant des propulseurs plasmiques qui permet d'optimiser la consommation de carburant pour le transfert depuis l'orbite d'injection jusqu'à l'orbite géostationnaire et aussi pour les manœuvres à poste. Et après, il y a une deuxième innovation, c'est le sous-système de contrôle thermique qui utilise une, ce qu'on appelle une boucle fluide qui permet de mieux répartir euh, les calories euh, dissipées par les équipements de la charge utile. Pour nous, du point de vue commercial, c'est la première fois qu'on embarque un digital processeur ou un, ou un processeur numérique. C'est le plus grand, le plus puissant jamais mis en orbite et ça va nous permettre de gérer flexiblement la capacité de la louer là-bas où il y en a besoin. For these two engineers who are passionate about technology and innovation, working on this satellite has been an incredibly special experience. C'est un sentiment de fierté d'avoir participé à cette aventure. Je reprends d'abord un ton dernier mot, la fierté. Du point de vue technique, c'est un défi. C'est un défi de travailler pour un satellite complexe comme Connect BHTS avec un DTP. C'est pour la première fois qu'on a ce type d'équipement dans, dans l'un des nos satellites. C'est toujours excitant de travailler pendant quatre ans sur, sur un satellite qui est l'un des plus puissants et les plus gros jamais construits dans, en Europe. So during our report, we saw the acquisition of Ascension Tracking Station, which is the third telemetry station on Ariane 5's trajectory, located, guys, as its name suggests, on Ascension Island in the Atlantic Ocean. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> on board Ariane 5 to Knife, we have a highly innovative satellite. I talked to you before, the Utelsat Connect VHTS. So VHTS means very high throughput satellite. Vincent, uh, the previous launch of the Connect satellite was in 2020. It was in January the 16th, uh, but it was a lighter one. Yes, the first Connect spacecraft was launched as well by uh, Ariane 5. Uh, it was a lighter spacecraft, about uh, 3.6 tons based as well um, on the Space Bus Neo platform uh, from Thales Alenia Space. It was uh, the first flight model and successfully launched in dual launch configuration to, uh, to a standard GTO orbit. Okay. Can you tell us about this amazing, this very strong relationship bond there is between Ariane Space, Utelsat and Thales Alenia Space? 
Yes, yeah, so Ion Space and Utelsat have built uh, a, a very strong relationship sh since uh, 1983. A very long and mutual confidence, as demonstrated uh, by the two-night launch. Uh, Connect VHTS is a 37th uh, Utelsat uh, spacecraft uh, launched by, uh, by, uh, by Ion Space. Well, yeah, so that's a, a long-term uh, friendship, we could say. We, we've been talking about the past, mm -hmm. but now let's take, talk about the future. Let's talk about Ariane uh, 6, the new European launcher. Because, of course, we are getting closer and closer to the maiden flight. Teams from ESA, Kness, Ariane Group have been very busy over this summer, reaching important milestones in the preparation of Ariane 6. Well, in the following report, we have all the latest updates, and we'll be showing you some exclusive images. Exciting times for the European space industry as the combined tests for the Ariane 6 launcher have begun. The objective of these tests is to verify and validate the compatibility between Ariane 6 and its dedicated launch pad at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. It's an essential dress rehearsal to prepare and train the teams before the rocket's inaugural flight. An industrial and human adventure with thousands of people spread across many European companies and institutions working together. The Ariane 6 program is managed and funded by the European Space Agency, ESA, with Ariane Group being responsible for the design and development of the launcher itself. The French Space Agency, CNES, took responsibility for the construction of the new Ariane 6 launch base at Europe's spaceport, and Ariane Space will be the launch service provider for Ariane 6. With the combined tests at Europe's spaceport, a number of milestones have been achieved over the course of the summer. In the new launcher assembly building, teams from Ariane Group, Kinez and ESA completed an important step of the process, the horizontal mechanical and electrical assembly of Ariane 6's central core. A few weeks later, the rendezvous. For the first time since its conception, Ariane 6 was able to meet its launch pad. The doors of the launcher assembly building opened to let Ariane 6's central core through. It took about 20 minutes at three kilometers per hour for the launcher to cover the 800 meters separating the assembly building from the launch pad. The rocket was then lifted from its horizontal assembly position to its vertical position. Ariane 6 is the first launcher in the Ariane series to be assembled horizontally. It makes it easier for the technicians and helps save time and money on every launch. Another element contributing to the competitiveness of Ariane 6 is its P120C solid rocket boosters. The P120C solid propellant motor is also used by Europe's other new launcher, Vega C. Sharing this key component means cost savings for both rockets. The P120C demonstrated its performance on the 13th of July with the successful inaugural flight of Vega C. But it's not only in French Guiana that testing of Ariane 6 continues. In the purpose-built test facility in Lampolshausen, Germany, crucial firing tests of the upper stage engine will soon begin. Then the upper stage will undergo further testing at ESA's STEC Technology Center in the Netherlands. Now only a few steps remain before the teams at Europe's spaceport can switch from the test models they're using for the combined tests to the flight hardware that will be used for the inaugural flight of Ariane 6. A first which will be followed by many launches, continuing Europe's heritage of independent access to space. Well, it's always very impressive to see the big beast moving on the launch pad. The beautiful beast, Baptiste. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's get back to our mission. During our report, the Libreville tracking station located in Gabon has recovered the signal from Ariane 5. La propulsion est nominale, le pilotage est calme, la trajectoire est nominale. So we hear the DDO, everything 
is perfect. So uh, in about 10 minutes, uh, Utilsat Connect VHTS will be separated. Mm -hmm. This unique uh, satellite was designed by the Thales Alenia space team in Toulouse, in the south of France. And in our next report, we'll hear about the work of the satellite operation architect and the program, program manager. This is what we call our space work. My favorite. Je m'appelle Juena, j'ai 33 ans, je travaille comme ingénieur opération satellite à Thales Alenia Space. Je m'appelle Stéphane, j'ai 48 ans, je suis maintenant chef de projet chez Thales Alenia Space et je suis ici depuis une vingtaine d'années. Je travaille en tant qu'ingénieur opération. Ces opérations consistent à tester les équipements, à réaliser des poussées sur orbite pour, pour corriger en fait l'orbite, jusqu'à ce que euh, on arrive sur l'orbite finale, l'orbite dans laquelle le satellite va vraiment réaliser sa mission. Je dirais qu'un chef de projet, c'est un peu comme un capitaine d'équipe de, de sport, de foot ou autre. Hein. Et son rôle, globalement, c'est rassembler des équipes, faire travailler des gens ensemble de différents niveaux, de différents métiers, leur donner les lignes directives pour, pour les étapes à franchir, les challenges qui sont devant nous. Gagner le match, c'est quoi C'est livrer un satellite avec les performances et le niveau de qualité requis dans les temps et dans le budget qu'ils mettent alloué. Et voilà, c'est un, un chef d'équipe, quoi. C'était mon rêve d'enfant. J'ai toujours voulu travailler dans le spatial euh, depuis, depuis que je suis au collège à peu près. Je pense que c'est en quatrième que j'ai eu le déclic. Je voulais même faire euh, astronome. Et, euh, et après, donc, mes parents m'ont plutôt incité à me diriger vers des études d'ingénieur. Euh, et par contre, clairement, euh, c'était ingénieur non spatial ou rien. C'était vraiment ça ma vocation. <rire> Le mieux, effectivement, c'est de faire euh, une école d'ingénieurs. Du moment qu'on est motivé, on y arrive. Majoritairement, c'est quand même des ingénieurs hein, qui travaillent dans, dans, dans ces métiers-là, mais, mais, mais pas que. Hein. Il y a quand même, euh, effectivement, hein, de la communication, euh, il y a de la finance et de la gestion de projet. Ce qui m'a beaucoup plu là, dans, dans, dans ce projet, c'est voir à quel point on arrive à, à motiver une équipe euh, pour réaliser un, un objet, on va dire, un peu hors norme, hein, et voir à, à quel point l'équipe s'est prise au jeu. Il y a tellement de, 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 de nouveautés dues au fait que c'est le plus gros satellite qu'on ait jamais fait, qu'il a fallu trouver des solutions inédites à certaines problématiques qui sont posées, et ça, ça a motivé les équipes. Pendant toute la phase d'assemblage du satellite, bon, on l'absorbe petit à petit, les petits morceaux par petits morceaux, donc euh, il grandit petit à petit, donc c'est comme les enfants, on ne les voit pas trop grandir en fait. Et puis euh, on a un test un peu particulier euh, où on teste le satellite dans une configuration qui est, qui est proche de celle qu'il aura en vol. Et pour le faire, on le suspend à plusieurs mètres de hauteur. Et la première fois que vous rentrez là et que vous levez les yeux et que vous voyez euh, un vaisseau spatial de, de 9 mètres de long au-dessus de vous, là vous dites wow, « waouh, c'est énorme ». Ça fait depuis l'Antiquité que les hommes regardent dans le, le, le ciel, euh, ça ne va pas s'arrêter demain. Il y a encore des, des très grands projets qui, qui s'organisent, aller sur la Lune. Il y a encore de, de très très grands challenges euh, à réaliser dans le spatial. Je pense vraiment que, que l'homme est un explorateur et, et, euh, et donc ça ne va pas s'arrêter là. So for all you students watching for us, with us tonight, if you have the heart of an explorer, opt for a career in the space industry because this is where the future lies. Yes, definitely the future. Vincent, during the report, we had the confirmation, I think, of the signal acquisition in Malindi. Yes, so we got confirmation that the launcher uh, is now seen by the Malindi ground station, uh, a ground station located in Kenya, so near the equator, uh, in the east of Africa. And this is from this ground station that the spacecraft separation will be, from the launcher will be, uh, will be seen. Yes, and we are now only five minutes away from the separation of the UTELSAT Connect VHTS satellite. So what will happen That's between now and then? Now. What are the steps? What are the next steps? Uh, in one minute and a half, the, the engine of the upper stage will, uh, will be cut off. The launcher will be then uh, injected on the spacecraft separation orbit. Extinction de l'ESC. He will enter a ballistic and orientation phase, the aim of which is to prepare the launcher and the spacecraft for the final uh, separation. The spacecraft operation engineers will progressively take control of the satellite. And after different health uh, tests and verification, they will uh, uh, initiate uh, successive uh, maneuvers in order for the spacecraft to reach its final orbit. So once arrived on the geo orbit, 
the operational life of the spacecraft uh, début de la manœuvre d'orientation could then start for a 15 years uh, lifetime okay so we heard the ddo just announced the the start of the orientation maneuver uh, can you explain what this means exactly and and how is how did do they manage uh, yes, so after uh, injection on the separation orbit mm -hmm. uh, and before the, the separation of the spacecraft, the, la the, the launcher is slowly oriented according to the spacecraft needs. Uh, an important tilting uh, is done between 150 degree and 160 degree smoothly with a low rate of uh, 0.8 degree per second. Uh, the duration of this uh, orientation phase is about four minutes. These orientation maneuvers are ensured by uh, the attitude control system of the Ariane 5 uh, upper stage. Once the launcher uh, is oriented in the correct uh, orientation, the spacecraft separation uh, is ordered by the, by the upper stage. Uh, the clamp band uh, that maintains and secures the spacecraft on top of the launcher is released and opened uh, by a specific uh, pyro activation device. And then the spacecraft is smoothly uh, separated by a relaxation of specific springs. So Vincent, can you tell us how Ariane t the Ariane space team operates this maneuver? Um, so this is uh, the work of, uh, of a whole team. So the different steps of the, of the mission are studied uh, in, a, in a very early phase in the frame of the, of the mission analysis and the launch preparation. Uh, usually there, there are two loops uh, in this uh, launch preparation, so a preliminary one and a final one. On the basis of the spacecraft uh, inputs we receive from our customers, um, the Ariane Space and Ariane Group teams uh, work together uh, and perform different studies um, and simulations that include so the trajectory, of course, the ballistic phase, um, the relative optimization, the payload separation and the non-collision verification. The trajectory is finally optimized, considering both uh, uh, launcher constraint and the spacecraft uh, requirements, and unable at the end to produce the flight software uh, for, the, for the mission. Well, thank you very much, Vincent, for all those explanations. Uh, approximately uh, 28 minutes ago, Ariane 5 uh, lifted off from Europe spaceport in a couple of minutes. It will complete its mission. Utilsat satellite will then commence its own mission and it's a mighty ambitious one. Uh, before talking about that, what news do you have from the fishbowl? We see them on the image. Everything yes. is concentrated. So everybody, everybody yeah, looking forward to final announcement from the range operation director we can, uh, we can see on the, on the screen. So in, uh, we are in the very last seconds before the spacecraft separation and we wait for the, the final announcement. And it's probably one of the key points. There we see Eva Bernacke, who is at the helm of UTELSAT. Yeah. We just saw her. Separation, UTELSAT connect VHTS. Wow. For yeah. Excellent. Wonderful news. We don't have much to explain exactly. when you see people clapping, exactly. when you hear this atmosphere. Uh, Vincent, um, can we say um, it finally happened and uh, it's a success and now the team can relax? Can we say that? Uh, yes, so <laughs> all the teams, as you can see, are, are, are very happy, so we, we can relax a, a, a little bit. So an important step uh, for the, for the spacecraft is achieved, so, but uh, it's not fully finished. Uh, so on, on launcher side, the mission continues uh, with the end of life uh, maneuvers of the, of the launcher upper stage. So with the objective to, to reduce the apogee of the, of the orbit and then avoid any risk of collision with the, with the spacecraft, of course. Okay. So we've seen on the screen in the fishbowl, we saw Eva Bernacke, who is at the helm of Utilsat. We saw Hervé Doré, who's head of Thales Alenia Space. His teams obviously designed and built the satellite launch tonight. Yeah. As we in know, a couple of minutes, uh, we will be interviewing them. We will be them. interviewing them. And this obviously is the culmination of years of work for all teams involved in this project. 
So now let's try to find well, Stefan Israel because uh, it's always at this time. Normally we, we have uh, a connection with Stefan Israel, but if I were there, I would probably be shaking hands and uh, exactly and enjoying the enjoying success the of this mission. Uh, so while we are waiting for Stefan, uh, yes, you know this place, Vincent, because you've been there. So those are the guests. Uh, I'm sure. And those are the people we will have in interview in a few seconds. And now we uh, we are waiting for Stefan Israel. That was, uh, he will he will be he will be with us Here within a few seconds. Oh, oh, Stefan! Congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a success. You can you can confirm now that it's a success. We can see the big smile on your face. <laughs> yes, this is. Um an additional success for Ariane 5 uh, tonight. Uh, you know, it is the 114th Ariane 5 uh, we have delivered uh, tonight, and we are very happy of this success for our dear customer and partner, uh, uh, UTELSAT, with a satellite, uh, outstanding satellite from Thales Alenia Space. And I really want to thank, to thank all the teams who have made this success possible. Ariane Space, for sure, our prime uh, contractor and, pri and first shareholder, Ariane Group and uh, all uh, the European uh, team with uh, CNES, uh, ESA and the industrial team. This is their success and they can be very proud of what they have achieved tonight. Yes, I'm sure that's a global success and everybody should be proud. Uh, let me ask you one question, what's next? So, what's next now? So, our next launch will be uh, on board of a Vega and it will be for uh, Airbus with a two-player Neo. It will be the second Vega C and after the maiden flight, the first Iron Space is going to operate. It will be 21 of November and later in December month, we are going to deliver for two good old friends of Iron Space as well. Umetsat and Intelsat and it will be the last Iron 5 of the year in December. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Thank you and congratulations to all the teams in Kourou. And uh, for those who, uh, who are watching tonight, be there for the Vega launching because it's always different images than from uh, IN5. It's, it's always uh, really spectacular. Thank you very much, thank Stefan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, stay with us because uh, now we um, don't go away because we are going to pass the microphone over to uh, Grégory uh, Gavrois of Orient Space. He will be there with us uh, and he will be have the pleasure. Thank you very much, Stefan. He will be, have the pleasure of interviewing the guest, Eva, uh, Eva Bernicke, CEO of uh, Utilsat, and Hervé Doré, CEO of Thales Alenia Space. But before, yeah, this is all the images we want to we wanna watch. Let's watch again the replay and again. of this liftoff that was incredible. Incredible. And even for you, Vincent, it was, it was a nice one. Yes, you're right. So it's. Uh... Well, that's those images are incredible. Uh, I, I said even for you, you're used. You know this, <laughs> but it's always a special uh, moment for. It's always a special for, moment for us. For us, I mean, look at that, look at that, this, look at but that image. For you, I mean, all the lights flashing, the cameras flashing. That's, yeah. a, that's a spot you've been in, watching. Yeah. So this is a, a, a very special time for all the for all the team. So it constitutes the, the results of uh, several years uh, dedicated to the preparation of the mission. And uh, so it's a, a, a real achievement of, uh, of a common work and joint effort. So it is a, a great satisfaction for, uh, for everybody. Yeah. So uh, as Baptiste asked you, have you ever witnessed a flight from Kourou? Have you been there? Have you? Yeah, so. Uh, what I... was it like? <laughs> so in the past, I participated to many uh, launch campaigns. Uh, and I must say that the, the most exciting f moment for me, uh, yes, it is uh, the lift of time, when, precisely when the launcher uh, starts its mission. So in the following minutes, uh, there is a, a, a feeling of uh, accomplishment. Um, and we can see uh, with our own eyes the results of a lot of uh, investment and pressure. So the investment of many, many work hours, yes. OK. 
Okay. So let's go back to the Jupiter room and see if Gregory is ready for us. He should be ready. He should be waiting. I think I can see them all lined up. Yeah. There we go. Hello, Gregory. Yes, Baptiste. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm very happy to be here uh, today with you. And I'm, I'm, I'm standing with Eva Bernecke, the CEO of Hutelsat, uh, as well as with uh, Hervé Deré, the CEO of Thales Alien Space. So uh, let's start with, uh, with you, Eva. So the satellite has been separated now, but uh, the operations are not over for you, right? No, this is a, a start. Uh, it's a separation. We're still waiting to acquire it at the other end. Then we'll have some months of orbit racing, and then we'll have uh, uh, several months of customer testing as well before we actually start serving our final customers with this, uh, with this amazing spacecraft. Yes, indeed. I, I can imagine this is a once in a lifetime for uh, you, some of your teams. And uh, what, what did it represent, all this work and all these uh, years and uh, this uh, achievement uh, that, we, that we have right now? It's a big first. It's a very big first. And I think we've heard enough about uh, Connect VHTS tonight to hear that this is trying to address a very big issue for all of Europe around the digital divide. To do that, we've launched something truly innovative together with Italia Zenia Space, which is going to be providing a tenfold times capacity to bridge that digital gap across Europe. But it's a long journey. It's a journey of a full team, some innovative engineers, and a whole lot of teamwork, and it's not over yet. Hopefully, it'll last for another 20 years. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's all we wish. Thank you for being here with us tonight, uh, Eva. Hervé, uh, as, we, as we told, this is a great moment for Utelsat, but also for you. Uh, what does it represent to have uh, manufactured, designed such a satellite? Hugely important. This is, as a matter of fact, a decisive moment, both for Utelsat and Telesania Space. Look at what we've done the most capacitive communication satellite ever built in Europe is now in space. So thanks a lot to uh, Ariane Espace for this uh, wonderful launch. Well done, Stéphane, well done to the teams. Thanks also to uh, Knes and ESA, without whom this uh, project would have not have been possible. Uh, Thalassania Space is extremely proud to have designed and manufactured this uh, Connect VHTS, the uh, satellite of all superlatives, as we called, as we called it. Uh, this satellite will deliver broadband connectivity across uh, Europe, Middle East and North Africa with a throughput of more than 100 megabit per second per user, which is equivalent to fiber. So this is totally in line with the vision of Thalassania Space, Space for Life. Congrats indeed, uh, Hervé. So as Eva mentioned earlier, there is a lot to do now uh, until the satellite will be operated on its final orbit. What, what about uh, the, the work that your team will do in the coming maybe days or weeks? So first, before talking about days and weeks, we're talking about minutes, uh, because uh, what we are expecting now is what we call the first cry of our baby, uh, meaning the signal that's going to be emitted from the satellite to the ground, so that, uh, so that our team that is located now in Cannes will be able to connect with the satellite, operate it, and basically manage the in-orbit raising uh, that will take place in the next months up to uh, the valid validation of the, of the space segment. And then the satellite will, will come into service and will not, uh, let's say, leave the journey at that, at that point of time because uh, uh, Thalassania Space and uh, its uh, sister company, Telespadio, will also, uh, let's say, distribute the, uh, the service for Connect VHCS, especially or notably for uh, governmental customers. Thank you very much, Hervé Deré, CEO of Thales Alina Space. Thank you very much again, Eva Bernecke, CEO of Utelsat. We wish now the best to uh, Utelsat Connect VHTS and a long life to it. Back to you, back to you, Emma and uh, Baptiste. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Grégory. And we'll probably be back to you a little bit later because uh, you're waiting for uh, Philippe Baptiste, uh, CEO of the CNES. Uh, now we can say, Vincent, mission completed. Yes, mission completed for Ariane 5. Uh, a perfect launch tonight for a new success for our launcher. So we can wish a long life to Utelsat uh, Connect VHTS. And, and let's another enjoy replay. another replay because it's always a great time. Always a great pleasure to see it go up. And that was 40 minutes ago.
So 40 minutes ago, and now the, the satellite is already released. Isn't it amazing? Amazing. All that happened in such yeah, 40 a short minutes. Time. Only 40 minutes ago. And you're in space. Look at that clear night. Clear skies. Can everyone? Yeah. Can everyone assist at um, this liftoff? I mean, you, I, would you I have guess to be a you, can't, you can't. You can't be, set, be on the, the launch pad, but. But I suppose you could be on the beach, the Pampum. Yeah, beach yes, nearby. you can. You can. There is different uh, location to, to, to assist. Tell us what whereabouts can one assist then? So on the beach, in an observation point. Yes, there is a different observation point. Uh, uh, there is a Toucan launch uh, launch um, site um, observation site. So. The, the nearest uh, the, um, to the to the launch pad, of course, there is as well uh, the, the as, as we have seen the Jupiter uh, control room outside, of course, and as well in, in, on the Kourou beach, uh, you can you can assist uh, the launch perfectly. Okay, we are going back to uh, to Kourou to the fishbowl because uh, they were even closer to the to the rocket than being on the beach, and we are going to connect with Gregory. Um, and uh, Philippe Baptiste, President, yeah. CEO of the CNES. Yes. Yes, uh, Baptiste. Uh, here we are back in Kourou. Uh, part of the team who make uh, this launch tonight a success is the CNES, the French Space Agency. And I'm standing here with uh, his president, Mr. Philippe Baptiste. So uh, it's a great success to you. I think not only about what CNES does on launch and uh, preparation of launch, but also on the satellite, right? Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a great success and, uh, and congratulations, of course, to, to Hotelsat and to Ariane Espace for this great launch. Uh, I am very proud not only for the launch base, I mean, uh, and I want to also to thank uh, very much all the teams that have been working on, the, on this launch, and uh, including also uh, Les Forces Armées de Guyane, who have been uh, really securing the base and uh, working very hard to make this uh, happen. But on top of that, I want to stress uh, that we, we, we had the opportunity to work uh, a lot with uh, Thales Alenia Space on, uh, on the payload, on the satellite itself, with a lot of uh, R&D programs that have been led over the last uh, few years. Uh, for more than 250 million euro, uh, financed by uh, by CNES and by uh, Secretary General for Investment. So it's a really a huge investment in terms of R&D uh, for really for the payload, and it's a great achievement, I think, for Hotelsat, but also for uh, for Europe because of this uh, of bridging this uh, connectivity gap, digital gaps that we that we still have in some parts of Europe, and uh, it's really a great achievement for all. Thank you very much, uh, Philippe Baptiste. This is indeed a great achievement uh, and a great mission that is starting right now. A few minutes now before we, we, we uh, wait for the acquisition of the satellite. Thank you very much. Back to you, Paris, and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Well, thank you, Baptiste, and congratulations to everyone at Ariane Space, Ariane Group. European Space Agency and at Europe Spaceport for making this launch happen. Yeah, thank you for all the teams working with us, uh, all the teams working here in Kourou. Thank you, Vincent. It was a pleasure My being pleasure, with yes. you tonight. We had really amaz images, amazing images. Thank you, Emma. Uh, good night to all of you, and thank you for following us. Uh, keep, stay tuned. Road to Space will be back for the next launch it with will. more exclusive and exciting content. If you look at the stars in the coming days, remember, we are building our future up there.